So we've set up the export login part. Let's complete it with our Firebase backend. So let's go to the Firebase console. And here in our project, let's go ahead and enable an authentication system. So in the authentication tab, go into the sign in method. And here we want to enable Google sign in. So let's click on edit and enable it. Let's save that out. Next, let's go into database and let's create our first real time database. So come down here and click on create database. And for this demo, we're going to start it in test mode so that we can read and write to our database. Let's enable that. And there we have our database created. Now let's head to the Google authentication documentation in Firebase. So here under web in Google sign in, we have authenticate using Google sign in with JavaScript. We're not going to be using the default flow that's given here. We'll come down here and there's an option which says advanced handle the sign in flow manually. That's what we're looking for. And in that we have this method given here called on sign in. Let's copy this method. And let's paste it in here above our sign in with Google async. I'm just going to change this function to a fat arrow function. There's also one more method, which is this is user equal method. Let's just first copy that in and then I'll explain it to you. It's available below this on sign in method. So let's copy that and paste that in here. I'm going to change that too as well. So coming to the on sign in method, basically after we sign the user in with the expo, here we'll call the on sign in method. That on sign in method will basically first check if the user is signed into the Firebase authentication system or not. If a user is signed in, it'll be returned. And then we'll check if that signed in user is the same as the user that's trying to sign in right now. That's going to be done with this is user equal method. So suppose you click on sign in with Google, you sign into your Google account, and then you try and click on sign in with Google again. This is where it'll detect if the user is the same user and it won't run the rest of this code. It'll just say, user already signed into Firebase. But in our app, if you remember, in our loading screen, we're already running this check. We make sure to see if the user is signed in, we take the user to the dashboard screen and the user does not see the login screen. However, we'll just leave this code as it is. So once we make sure that this is not the same user that's logged in as of now, we go ahead and we create the credentials for the user using this line of code here. As per the documentation, it tells you to use the ID token like this. However, it does not work that way. We need to replace this ID token. And in fact, we need to pass in the ID token and the access token separately, which are available on the Google user that's returned to us after the user is signed in. Once that's done, we go ahead and sign the user into the Firebase authentication system using sign in and retrieve data with credentials. In case there's any error, that error is caught here. Otherwise, let's just run a dot then and just console.log user signed in. So we need to make sure that is user equal is called correctly. So we need to change this and pass in this dot is user equal. As you may remember in the last part, this is currently limited to the scope of this function here. If we wanted to have any knowledge of functions outside, we need to bind it at the end of the Firebase function. So let's do that here. Where the Firebase function ends, we'll just pass a dot bind and pass it this. So that sets up these two functions. Let's go ahead and import Firebase here. So we'll say import Firebase from Firebase. And here, after the expo login is complete in sign in with Google async, under success, we'll say this dot on sign in and pass it the returned user. Now let's test this out. Let's go into authentication. Let's click sign in with Google now. Click on continue. I'll click on my email address. As you can see, the user was signed in and we're taken directly to the dashboard screen. Let's just refresh this page. And you'll notice we're getting the user in our Google authentication system. However, if we go into our database, you'll notice that we still don't see our user there. It's still asking us to create a new database. So let's go ahead and create our user in our Firebase database now. Coming up here, once we've logged the user in into Firebase, we'll get the returned user. Here, I'm just going to paste in some code and walk you through it. We'll create a reference to the Firebase database and we'll create a node called users. Under that node, we'll save each user under its unique ID. 
Then we can set the details of the user that we want. Under result, we get a lot of information available from Google to us. It depends on your app, what kind of data you want to save into your database. So assuming that you'd want to have other login systems as well in the future, you can just save the current user's email under a Gmail node. Then we can save the user's profile picture, the first name and the last name. That way, we'll have the user logged into our Firebase Google authentication system and we'll also have the user available in our database for us to be able to use the user's details anywhere in our app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our authentication system and just delete this current user. Then we'll refresh the app and we'll try and log the user back in. Now if we click sign in with Google, once the user is signed in and taken to the dashboard, we can go into our database and we can confirm that our user was created in our database. Now let's just go ahead and create a sign out method in the dashboard screen. So here on top, let's import button. Let's import Firebase from Firebase. And here let's pass the button in. Let's call it sign out. And here this should not have that trailing edge space. And this will just call firebase.auth.signout. Let's save that and refresh the app. Now if you click on sign out, we're taken back to the sign with Google screen. Now before we log the user in again, we'll make a small change. And that's because every time we sign the user in, we're currently calling this Firebase method. What that's doing is it's overwriting these details over and over again. So instead of doing that, what we'll do is we'll check if it's a new user or not. So we'll say if result dot additional user info dot is new user, which is a flag that's available, only then run this Firebase set method. Else, we're just gonna copy this, paste that in here, and we'll instead run an update call here, which will just update the last logged in for us. So we'll say last logged in, date dot now. And for the first login, we can pass in a created add property, which will log the time that the user was created. Now, if we save this, Let's just go ahead and delete our user once more. Let's go into our database and delete the data from here as well. And now let's try and log the user in twice. So if you click on sign in with Google, this is the first time that the user is logging into the app. We can confirm in our authentication system that the user is added. In our database, we can confirm that its data has been stored. We have a created ad flag as well. Now if we sign the user out and sign the user back in again, instead of updating all the other details, the only detail that gets updated is the last logged in. So this way we can take the user's login details from any login provider like Google in this case, save it into our database and then use the user's details for our application.